Ladies and gentlemen, through a worldwide network of radio and television, we are bringing you an on-the-spot account of the first expedition around the moon. Here at space station number one, a thousand miles above the Earth, the final preparations have all been made. Except for the time the rocket is on the other side of the moon, our radio and that of the station will be in constant communication with the ship during the 10-day voyage. As the moon ship stands by, the all-important pressurized spacesuit enters the rocket's airlock for the last time. During the trip, it'll be used only in the case of emergency. The captain is the last man to come aboard. He will direct the entire expedition from his position at the front of the ship. The navigator with his specialized instruments is responsible for plotting the unmarked path through space. The radio operator must maintain constant communication with the Earth on the space station. Finally, the rocket ship's motor and other mechanical functions will be the responsibility of the engineer. After final instrument check, the ship's crew lock themselves in position for the blast off. Now, only minutes remain until firing time. The captain sets the automatic firing timer and reports to the space station. RM1 to station one. Firing timer is engaged. We will begin power maneuver for departure in exactly 16 hours, 23 minutes, 47 seconds. Roger, RM1, 16 hours, 23 minutes, 47 seconds, over. Crew will secure and stand by for firing in eight, four seconds. Acknowledge. Navigator, check. Radio, okay. Engineer, check. another report. Our firing time was 10 minutes, 0.35 seconds. Cutoff velocity, 21,888 miles per hour. Cutoff altitude, 1,765.2 miles. 1.6 low. Okay. Now let's double check that star tracker with an optical and radar fix. Right. Captain, position check shows 0.7 miles below, 1.2 miles left, and 0.3 miles ahead of standard flight path. We have only a 0.03% error in azimuth reading. Sounds good. Bill, let's transmit all your tape reports to the station.
gentlemen, we are interrupting our program to give you the following message. Moonship RM-1, which left the space station a little over 51 hours ago, reports a distance of 169,000 miles from the Earth. The ship is traveling at 9,400 miles per hour, and deviations from the intended flight path have been so small that the captain reports no corrective power maneuver has been necessary as yet. We are happy to report all the crew are in good condition. Check the console, Joe. Try to pick it up. Bill, is your electrical system working? Emergency condition. Repeat. Verify. Over. Meteor hit. Number two nitric acid tank. Pressure's dropping fast. It's number two, all right. Joe, put the air blowers on emergency power. Frank, get in the bottle suit and pass that hole. Don't use your motors near that leak. Try to reach it with the dripping arm. Station 1 to RM1. Station 1 to RM1. Our instruments indicate emergency conditions. Verify. Repeat. Verify. Over. RM1 calling Station 1. This is Station 1. Go ahead. At 51 hours, 22 minutes elapsed flight time, registered hit by a small meteor. Puncture between Station 51 and 52, upper bulkhead of nitric acid tank number 2. Repairs are underway. to Station 1. This is Station 1. Go ahead. Meteor puncture sealed. Estimated diameter of meteor, 1 16th of an inch. No injuries. Equipment okay. Estimated loss, 180 gallons of nitric acid. Proceeding on flight plan. Over and out. Station 1, this is RM1. At 110 hours, we are beginning measurements at rim of the moon for accurate position fixes. We are now picking up the unknown side of the moon. Bill, give me an altitude reading. Okay. Radio altimeter reads 22,886 miles from the moon's surface. Oh, we're moving in fast. Frank, have you got anything in that star occultation reading yet? Just a moment, I'll run it through the computer. Captain, we're approaching the moon on ellipse 29. Course indicates collision with moon at 120 hours, 56 minutes. Correction tape 340 must be used at 116 hours. <laughs> As the 116th hour approaches, the navigator must act quickly to avoid a collision with the moon. He starts the tape selector, which will automatically correct the rocket's course by firing the motors for a precise number of seconds. RM-1 to station one. At 116 hours, conducting power maneuver on correction tape 340. Out. enough. We'll make the correction on our return maneuver. Joe, set the spatial attitude control to keep us lined up at the flight path tangent. Stand by for observation schedule 17. 
Station 1 to RM1. We acknowledge observation schedule 17. Checklist as follows. Green filter 93-B on electronic camera on upper astrodome. Use magnetic color tape on station 3, lower astrodome. Run 180 degree graph through contour mapper. Over. The next few hours will constitute the most important phase of the trip. The moon is sweeping past the ship at great speed. And in the brief span of about three hours, all close-up observations of its unknown surface must be completed. Station 1. We are now seeing the Earth disappear behind the moon's rim. This will be our last radio message until you see us on the other side. Roger, RM1. Good luck. I see what looks like a tremendous crater ahead. Bill, what does the contour mapper indicate? Depth of crater is beyond range of contour mapper. It's a day and night terminator in five minutes. Frank, arm your flares and stand by to fire when I give the signal. Okay, Frank, fire your flares at three minute intervals. Captain, I'm getting a high Geiger count of 33 degrees. My scintillation counter indicates a high degree of radioactivity on the same bearing. Contour mapper shows a very unusual formation at about 15 degrees southern latitude and meridian 210. Get some flares in that area, quick. Station 1, do you read us? Over. Roger, RM1. We read you weak, but clear. Over. At 123 hours, we are observing the Earth emerging from behind the moon. We will leave moon shadow at 124 hours, 14 minutes. Our ETA in orbit is 241 hours, 27 minutes. After three hours of total darkness, the ship breaks from the moon shadow into the glaring sunlight to continue on its five-day return trip. The irresistible power of the Earth's gravity has now changed the rocket's direction and is pulling it with ever-increasing speed back to the space station. Start the gyro attitude control for the braking maneuver and give me a time set for firing. Check. At 240 hours, preparations are being made to enter the orbit of the space station. The ship's direction is reversed so that the subsequent firing will slow the rocket's speed and jettison the empty fuel tanks. Okay for firing. Guidance tape 264 inserted. Set firing timer for two, four, one hours, four, nine minutes, 11 seconds. Okay. Joe, 
Set the tank release and report. Fuel tank set for release. Firing timer set. Stand by for power maneuver in three, five seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just witnessed the first successful voyage into interplanetary space. This pioneered trip around the moon will soon be followed by an expedition which will actually land on the moon's surface. Even now, construction is going forward on the atomic-powered rocket ship that will challenge the limitless depths of space and solve the mystery of the red planet Mars.